Hi everyone, I'm Liz Brown Swanson. Thanks for watching Around the Peninsula. We are bringing you special coverage of the South Bay City's Council of Government's 23rd Annual General Assembly. Now this year's program is powerful as it is focused on climate change and how we can become more energy efficient. There is an incredible lineup of speakers, including the U.S. Secretary of Electricity, and today's moderator is our very own RPV, Mayor Pro Tem, John Cruikshank. So let's now tune in to this program to see all the highlights. Hi, John Cruikshank here, Mayor Pro Tem in Rancho Palos Verdes, also chair of the South Bay City Council of Government, and welcome to the 23rd Annual General Assembly. This is an amazing event that the South Bay City Council of Government has every year, and today we've got two exciting topics. We're going to be talking about really some of the most important issues, water and electricity. And these are things that affect all of us in the South Bay and we want to work as a team to hear from some of the experts in the field and give us some great ideas that we can share and come up with ideas for our own cities to take back and make all of our lives better uh, for all the residents. Um, this year also is super important because we've added a component. In, in our audience we have I believe it's six youth members. They're going to be listening to all the panel speakers. And then at the end, they're going to come up as panelists and they're going to talk about what they heard and some of the ideas they've come up with in terms of what they've heard. So one of my main roles today is to act as moderator for the event. I have an opportunity to thank our sponsors, to thank everyone for coming, and also to have an opportunity to bring the panelists up and to have us hear from them on some of the ideas and work that they've been doing as experts in their field. So from a local level in the city of Rancho Palos Verdes, both electricity and water are very topical issues, they always are. Uh, we've been asked to look at an all-electricity grid to take over as our energy and we know that the struggles we've had with that, with power outages and the shortage, so that the, does the de supply actually to meet the demand. Also with water, this year we've had an unusual amount of rain, but typically we've been in drought conditions. So what does that mean in terms of the uh, feast or famine in regards to water and the storage and the need for water? How does that affect our residents in Rancho Palos Verdes? And what could we be doing about it to make sure that we ensure both water and electricity are available and abundant and low cost for all of our residents. As chair of the board, it's a it's a, a great honor. There's 15 cities that we represent plus two of the Los Angeles County supervisorial districts. And the great thing about it is that it's not just Rancho Palos Verdes working as a city, it's all of us working together to work through common problems that we all have. And when you have 15 cities, two county supervisors, you're going to find a more robust solution to problems that you have. And so the work that the COG does, we don't shy away from any of the difficult issues. We find ourselves trying to tackle not only the energy and uh, environmental issues that we've talked about, but also homelessness, transportation, and all the things that affect our everyday lives. So it's a very great honor to be chair, and I'm really proud to be here today. So what is it we want to accomplish today? What we want people to do is, of course, have an opportunity to see old friends, but even more importantly than that, we want to have people come up with ideas, hear ideas, and then bring those great ideas back to their community and to make everyone's lives better. So that's the goal of today. So once again, welcome to the South Bay City Council of Government General Assembly. Hey, I'm Gene Rodriguez. I'm the Assistant Secretary of Energy for the Office of Electricity at the Department of Energy. But I'm excited to be here today as the keynote speaker for the General Assembly of the South Bay City's Council of Governments. But most importantly, I'm a 30-year uh, resident of Manhattan Beach. So I live in the South Bay, I love the South Bay, and I'm so happy to be home here with everybody. My keynote really comes down to one key point. And that point is that now, now is the time for collective action. Now is the time for muscular action. Now is the time for working together on the issues that are facing us. So whether you're driven by the fact that there's a, a undeniable scientific consensus around the urgency of need to address climate change, now's the time to lean in on that. If you're driven by the fact we have utilities here, that the, the grid uh, needs to be modernized to meet the challenges of the 21st century, then now is the time to start leaning in on that. 
or if you're driven by, by the fact that, uh, uh, just quite frankly, uh, now is the time to ensure that we are working on every aspect of ensuring that climate, jobs, justice are available to all Americans, now is the time to lean in. So I'm hoping at this assembly, where we have so many people from so many different stakeholder groups here, we can use today's uh, assembly to, to, to find ways to collaborate and work together for a better future. And people often don't know, well, what is it that the assistant secretary for the Office of Electricity does? When, when I first got there, I read these briefing packages and people would try to shorthand it by saying, oh, it's the office of the grid. So we do everything that has to do with reliability, resilience, and security of America's power grid. That includes grid scale energy storage. But, but I think it's really much more than that. I, I joke with my folks back in my office in DC that I'm gonna rename our office to be the Office of Enabling America's Clean Energy Future because that's the real impact. It's about bringing the benefits of clean energy to all Americans. Uh, my background, I don't think it's a checkered past, but I've bounced around a little bit over my career. I've spent 33 years now and counting on the clean energy space. Uh, 24 of those years, we're right here working with Southern California Edison in charge of their customer programs for energy efficiency, solar, things like that. Uh, then I went into consulting on energy policy and energy programs, all of it focused on spreading the good word about clean energy programs. I was, I was retired. I was sitting there on my comfortable retirement couch with a Diet Coke in one hand and a TV clicker in the other, and, and I got a call from the White House asking if I might be interested. And it's the honor of a lifetime to join the Biden-Harris administration as the Assistant Secretary of Energy. So that's where I am now, and that's what I'm so excited about what I'm doing. The, the issues we're facing today are the growing pains from moving from uh, a grid that was really built in the ba baby boomer generation and designed with 19th century uh, engineering principles and 20th century technologies. Grid modernization is the key, not just for meeting the challenges of the future, but solving some of the problems that we experience today. Uh, it, it, it really is the case uh, that grid modernization is kind of an amorphous term and it takes on so many different things that have to happen, but it's important that we start working now on reforming everything from the physical structure of the grid to how we operate the grid to bringing more resources onto the grid, everything working together to make sure that America is a leader in the clean energy economy. Bottom line is this, if there's going to be one takeaway, one point, one thing I hope folks remember from my talk today, it's that conversation is nice, collaboration is important, but it's a commitment to taking collective action that counts. What we need and want to do is for everyone in this room today to, to just affirm that it's time to reach across the aisle, reach across the hall, and work together on a better clean energy future for everybody. We're very blessed. We live here in the South Bay with probably the best climate in the whole world. But I'll, I'll tell you, uh, my wife and I had the opportunity to rebuild our home. We lived in a little beach cottage. We, we built the home that we're going to live in and retire in. So it starts right up on the roof. If you climb up the roof of our house, you'll see a, a white roof that helps to repel uh, the heat gain from the sun. On top of that white roof, you'll see solar panels that provide on a net energy basis most of our energy needs. And then what energy we do need, uh, we get from a provider who's giving us 100% renewable energy. Then when you go inside the house, it looks like any other house, but if you pay attention, you're gonna notice that all the electric and gas appliances are energy efficient, from the lighting to the stoves to everything else that's in there. And then we also built out using sustainable materials. Now the truth of the matter is, we're no saints and we don't live like monks. We live a, a comfortable Southern California lifestyle. But we found that through uh, the home we live in and the way we live in it, we can find ways to sip energy instead of guzzling it. It saves on our energy bill and quite frankly it makes us feel better about our contribution as well.
I'm Jackie Backrack. I'm the Executive Director of the South Bay City's Council of Governments and also a former mayor and council member in the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. I'm excited to, about today. It's our 23rd Annual General Assembly and it's going to be filled with a lot of interesting information from our exhibit halls as well as from our speakers and it gives us an opportunity to get to be t with together e for the day and also to share all the information we're getting. Okay, our theme this year is the South Bay leading the way in resilience and adaptability. We want to talk about uh, resources that are becoming more scarce and yet the growth in California and how we're going to balance all of those things. I think that what we hear about energy, for example, is the unreliability. People are concerned and so we're looking into microgrids and energy storage and how we can bring some of that to the South Bay and we're, we're still exploring it. We don't have any, any uh, path yet, but we want to prepare for the future. The South Bay Cities Council of Governments, which we call the COG, is uh, 16 cities and it's from the Port of Los Angeles to the airport. So it's all the cities in between. And we, uh, what our, our byway, by word is to, to val add value to cities and to help them with advanced planning. Uh, to, to think about the future, what's going to happen. So we work very hard in energy conservation and water efficiency, food waste. We really want to, to prepare for our future by conserving our resources. We're very sustainable. We also work on transportation issues. You might see we have a little turtle here because we're promoting a local travel network for very slow speed vehicles, which will help local trips and be zero emission. We have a fiber network, which we've connected all of our cities uh, together so they have low cost internet and have much more broadband uh, capacity than they used to have. So what we try to do is we try to add value to our cities and, um, and bring them issues that we can all learn together, share together, and implement it when, it's, when that's the right thing to do. 23 years ago we had our first General Assembly and it's really wonderful to see what's happened because our first General Assembly was at the Redondo Beach City Library. We had dinner and uh, we had a speaker come in and the dinner came from Costco where uh, my deputy and I went and we just bought trays of, of lasagna. So we've gone from lasagna at the library to uh, an event this big, and we're very excited about it. It's great to be joined by one of the members of the youth panel, which is new this year. We also have a former Palos Verdes Peninsula High School graduate, so we know you are super at what you do. Um, talk about just being on this panel today and what you hope the conversation will be all about. Well, uh, we have a spread of different ages, some people still in high school. I'm post-college and my first job. Uh, a lot of us are excited about what the future holds and we want to make sure that we're working towards a positive climate. And just being here and seeing what's going on is going to be really informative. I think on the panel they want us to tell what we're going to hope for of the proposals, of the ideas they bring forward today. And uh, as we go forward I think we'll see some more things that the youth are going to be excited about. I work for the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management. It's uh, under the Department of the Interior, so I'm, I'm a federal employee. We've been working on the offshore wind leases for the Pacific Ocean. Uh, specifically in California, we just announced two, one in Morro Bay and one in Humboldt. Uh, they've been split into five lease areas, and we recently had an auction in December. So talk about that process, how you're getting communities to embrace wind power. Well, it's, it's important that we are giving the right information, that we provide the information to the public. We try to have as many forums as possible for stakeholders to come in and be heard. We also included community benefits agreements in the leases and auction that we held so that we're able to make sure that some of the money coming in goes back to the communities that are going to be next to and part of these projects. So you're on the cutting edge of working on alternate uses of energy as we try to shift away from fossil fuels and fuels and there's people that try to, you know, we debate that, like how do we do that efficiently? Um, what, what is your philosophy on this strategy to move away from fossil fuels? I think it's important that we move towards a zero carbon future. We have goals for that at the national level, at the state level, and the only way to do that is going to be through a multitude of different energy sources and I see offshore wind as part of that, part of the solution to the problem. As we keep working forwards we're going to need to make sure that we have as many different alternative energy sources as possible and this is one that pairs really well with solar because solar once the sun goes down you lose the energy but at night time the wind picks up on the ocean and it's a great way for keeping a consistent amount of power into the grid. Talk about how you got into this line of work, what interested you about this, and just sort of the success you've seen on what you do. Oh, uh, well, I did the Coro Fellowship in Public Affairs right after college, and I got to meet a member of the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management. 
I interned with them and then eventually they brought me back for a role on the renewable energy team. They knew I had an interest in climate and I wanted to make sure I was working on something positive for the, for the planet. So we were talking more about what you do with getting wind farms installed um, a, along our California coastline. In the end, when you put one of those farms in, how much power will it produce? For instance, it, our Morro Bay area, one of the two that we're doing, has the potential for three gigawatts, which can power a million homes in California. Hi, I'm Larry Mieslisch, chair of the Ranch of Palos Verdes Emergency Preparedness Committee. The weather is changing, the climate seems to be changing. We have excessive wet periods, we have excessive heat periods. The future of our environment and the climate is clearly unusual for us. We know the future forecast is different. Resolving these issues, which could lead to increased emergency type uh, situations and incidents, resolving these really takes not just ourselves, it takes our neighbors, and much more than our neighbors on the street, much more than our neighbors on the cities immediately around us. It's more of a regional thing. That's why today I'm here at the General Assembly, where we bring together leaders from all of the South Bay cities to discuss ways to change the future of climate change for the better. One of the speakers here today, our keynote speaker, in fact, Gene Rodriguez, who you may know is on the Department of Energy on the, on the uh, federal level. And he made a really good point today that as far as electricity goes, we are so used to taking it for granted. When we walk into the house, we flip that light switch and the lights go on. We don't even give it a second of thought until there's a problem with it. So it is important that we, for the future, establish resilient, reliant electrical networks. And that involves all kinds of upgrades to our ancient transmission system, our ancient electricity generation system. So we have that electricity when not only we flip that light switch, but also plug in our EV to charge it up overnight. It's something to think about. We all will be playing a part uh, in that future starting now. I'm Ara Moranian, I'm Rancho Palos Verdes City Manager, and I also happen to be the chairperson for the South Bay Cogs City Managers Group. Talk about why, what you're hoping to get out of today and just the excitement of being here. Well, you know, the South Bay Cog represents the, the member cities in the South Bay, and today's theme is uh, sustainability and resiliency, and we, as the city managers group, we come together and we meet every month, and we discuss items and topics that fall under sustainability and resiliency, and, and I'm hoping to glean some information from today's event that I can bring back to the group and we can discuss as it, as it impacts uh, the entire South Bay region. You as city manager, you get calls all day long from residents concerned about power outages, number one. What do we do in our own city to work on this issue, uh, to work with utilities, and also our goal to become more green in our own city? Yes, no, that's a great question. In fact, I'm meeting with uh, a group of residents uh, this evening to discuss the, pow the recurring power outages that we have in a certain neighborhood. And I think the first thing that we have to look at is why are we having these events, these recurring uh, power outages, and what we can do working with our partner, South, um, Southern California Edison, to address uh, the, the issue, find the core of the problem. But in the bigger picture, um, power is is a resource that we understand is is limited and we've got to find innovative ways to tap into providing us the energy especially as the state moves towards um, using power and electricity for many other things how does our own city work on energy efficiency well we the city first of all it takes pride in in conserving energy and trying to rely on natural resources. And so we've done uh, numerous studies and assessments of our facilities to find ways to cut back. We, uh, a few years back, we changed out uh, all of our light bulbs to energy efficient light bulbs. And so we continue to do that. We, we look at ways to conserve water. So uh, all types of means to, to participate and, and give back to the community. My name is Rodney Tanaka. I'm a city council member with the city of Gardena. I'm also the second vice chair of the South Bay COG. 
And today is going to be a great event. Uh, we're looking forward to a lot of information that affects South Bay cities and how we can make the South Bay a much better place to live. And we added something new this year. We're going to have youth uh, participate, and I'm really looking forward to that to see what our future has in store for us. What do you see as the challenges to uh, modernize our grid, uh, try to you know do something about all these power outages we feel in Southern California, and just become more energy efficient? Well, uh, with the South Bay COG, uh, we actually work with the uh, government to try and make sure that uh, we're doing green, that we're doing electric, that we're trying to uh, get um, uh, vehicle, smaller vehicles on the road to uh, assist in the, uh, the way we travel. Of course, with more electric vehicles out there, there's that challenge now of needing more electricity. Yes. And that's always going to be a challenge, especially when you talk about uh, electricity, power outages, uh, you know, how do we get rid of the batteries? What do we do with them? Uh, and, and those kind of costs. But I think uh, government will work it out, I hope. Personally, what do you do in your own life to uh, work towards being greener in your own home? Um, I don't water my grass. <laughs> uh, but I, I do try to uh, cut back on uh, my water usage, uh, the way I use gas. Gas prices were terrible. But uh, I try to make sure that the things that I'm doing uh, are working for the things that I say that we're doing. So I try to be that example. Hi, I'm Kim Fuentes. I'm the Deputy Executive Director for the South Bay Cities Council of Governments, and I oversee a lot of different programs for the COG, specifically the Environmental Services Center. That program partners with utilities and water districts and transportation um, agencies to implement energy efficiency, water conservation, waste reduction, um, for the community. We work with businesses, we work with cities, we work with school districts, we work um, in the general public. We provide information to the general public about different opportunities, incentives, and ways that they can serve. Community can always look at our website. We have a lot of information there. The um, South Bay Cities Council of Governments and all of our programs are listed there. And there are um, links directly to our partners. So you can find out about incentives, um, to do things like change out inter um, to change out water efficiency um, devices like for your faucets or um, different things around your house. You can also look and find information about waste reduction and recycling. There is information about how you can reduce your energy use with um, both natural gas as well as uh, electricity. And also transportation, like how can you get to where you're going using something besides your gas vehicle, if you have a gas vehicle. So can you walk, can you bike, can you ride share, can you van pull? Um, so we have a lot of that kind of information as well. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Jesse Villapondo and I'm your emergency services coordinator for the city of Rancho Palos Verdes. And we're here at the SB COG um, General Assembly just uh, helping residents be prepared for emergencies. Yes, uh, today's uh, meeting's focus is on climate change, and we know um, we have all been experiencing the heavy rains and, and, the, and the drought that's been plaguing California for these several years. And this summer, we're expecting um, some, some, some heat waves as well. As an as emergency planner, we must be prepared for anything. So um, that means for wildfire, droughts, or any, anything uh, for storms as well. So um, what that really means for residents is to make sure you have, you have a plan and you're prepared and you have a kit as well. Well, I'm Eric Wolterding. I'm a park ranger with the city of Rancho Palos Verdes, and I'm uh, obviously re representing the uh, Recreation and Parks Department, and I'm here talking about our nature preserve, um, our marine protected area, um, and the various aspects of what we do um, relating to the nature up there, which is a, a great lively scene. We have uh, about 1,400 acres of preserved land, tide pools, um, marine protected area, as I mentioned. Um, so we are all working in, in collaboration with, uh, with nature and trying to keep it uh, healthy and, and uh, doing what it does. I mean, we, we're, what we do is we focus on the plants and the plant life. So, you know, that's a, a big role in, in climate change is protecting these areas, keeping the, the habitats active, the plants thriving, um, and kind of keeping that land separate and, um, and protected. So that's, that's what we emphasize. Hello, uh, my name's Eric Verdusco. I'm here with the Water Replenishment District of Southern California, WRD. Um, our agency manages the groundwater supply that uh, over 40 cities throughout LA County uh, use as their main water source. Uh, we are here just uh, informing the community about who we are, what we do, the importance of water, and the importance of um, 
not wasting water. Uh, we are here also inviting people to our groundwater festival that's coming up soon. Uh, you can get information by going to our website, uh, wrd.org. I'm Jim Knight, uh, former mayor of Rancho Palos Verdes and uh, former vice chair of uh, South Bay Cog years ago. And uh, the topic they have today is really important for all communities. Um, the, the sustainable energy is a really important thing that, that larger communities need to work with. And it's a topic that uh, we need to have our local communities move forward with. Now, uh, I implemented a green building program for Rancho Palos Verdes when I was on the planning commission before I got onto council. And um, I went around the various cities and said, well, let's do a program that we have the same building codes. And as a result of that, actually through the South Bay COG, formed a green energy program where the cities met together at meetings, independent of the COG meetings, uh, and talked about what things are doing for green, uh, making their cities more green. And that will do it for our special coverage of the South Bay City's Council of Governments 23rd General Assembly. And we hope our program has energized you to work for a better energy future. Thanks for joining us. See you next time on Around the Peninsula.